Hi, welcome to today's video. Today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Over the past few weeks we've been looking at different fountain pens and I thought well why not have a look at how I'm using them. To do this, well this week I received this. This is a Lodge Term 1917 bullet journal. One of the things I want to do is to start getting more productive and I want to start using the bullet journal method to do this. And this is an ideal time to start using fountain pens. So I bought this notepad, it's arrived. I'm going to set it up and get everything ready to start from the 1st of February, 2021. Now the fountain pens that I'm going to be using, there is this one here. This is a Twisby Eco with a 1.1 stub. In here is Robert Oster Grungilt. I've got another Twisby Eco. This time it's got a fine nib and this has got Van Diemen's Devil Blacking. I've also got my Pilot Custom Heritage 92 with Pilot Irishizoku Momiji ink. And the final pen I'm going to be using is this one. This is a Fountain Pen Revolution Darjeeling with a medium nib and Robert Oster's Rubine ink. Join me down on the mat and we'll get started on setting up this bullet journal and talking through what I want to use it for. So here we are down on the mat. So here I've got a Lodge Term 1911 bullet journal. I got this in the emerald colour. Well, two reasons. First, I like green, so it's a nice green colour. The second reason is I thought to myself, well, this, the idea of this is it should be going everywhere with me. And I've got a lot of black and grey things, and I do forget to pick them up from time to time. So I thought by going for this nice bright colour, it's going to be something which should be in my face every time I look around. So hopefully I'll remember to take it with me. So it's got this nice strap here, which is holding it all together. So that's elasticated. So we'll undo that. And then we're going to open up to the front page. So one of the things I like about this, because it's designed for bullet journaling, it's got a key here to help you to work out what you've got to do. So a dot for a task across for completed. I'm not going to go through all these. There's plenty of videos about bullet journaling around. Here, it's got my contact details. So I've just covered that up for now. That's there just in case I should lose it. The first thing I've done is I've written my intents. Now, for that, I use this, this Pilot Custom Heritage 92, and that's got Pilot Irishizoku Momiji Inc. So the idea of this intense is I'm using this to describe what I want to get from the bullet journaling that I'm going to be doing. So I had to think about this to come up with two or three bullet points. And those that I came up with, I want to use this to increase my daily productivity, to track what's going on, and also to determine what can be done each day. Now, all three of these are really linked together. It's all about boosting that daily productivity side. And these are the intents that I want to use for this. So if we go now to the next page, so we've got a title page, we've got some quick tips that come, and then we come to the index. Now, before I go through the index, you'll notice a number of places I've got these. This is just kitchen roll that I've cut to, to be the size of the page. What that's there for, that's to act as a blotter because the whole idea of the bullet journal you don't want to be sitting waiting for ink to dry on the page before you move on. You just want to be able to move on. So putting the blotter in there will help with that because it should absorb any extra wet ink when I close the pages. So I'll just move that out of the way. So this book, it comes predefined with index pages. So there's four of them, which is really nice. So what I've said is, here's my index. And we're going to go through these bit by bit. The first one, annual theme and goals master project list, gratitude log, lessons learned, brain dump, video improvements, and then month. Now, if you notice, I've got what it is I'm going to be using it for, followed by the page number. This allows me to have multiple pages. So if I find I fill up my gratitude log, well, I just add the next page number that I need to go to. Again, with this Lodge Term book down here in the corner, you can see it's got the page number already on there. So it makes that nice and easy. 
So we've got a couple of pages of index pages. Then we start getting into the meat of it. And the first one we come to, this is the future log. Now, I'll put my hand up. That's part of February one when I was setting this up, which makes me feel really, really stupid. And unfortunately, it's not really something you can go back and correct. So I'm going to have to live with that. But here's a future log. The idea of this is as things come up that need to be done in the future, I can just put them in the right month. So as you can see, I've got some words and I've got some lines on here. What I've already done is I've gone through and pre-formatted the pages that I want to use because there's a lot of videos out there showing you how to do this. And I've got to be honest, you don't need to watch me drawing lines. Everybody knows how to do that. What you need to do is get an idea of how I'm setting it up. And I thought, well, let's do all that pre-work beforehand. Then we can just talk about it. The black lines here, they're done using the Twisby Eco with a fine nib. And this has got Van Diemen's Devil Black in it. Really beautiful black ink that. And the wording, and for a lot of my titles, I'm using this. Again, it's another Twisby Eco. This time it's got a 1.1 stub nib in it. And the ink in here is by Robert Oster and it's Grungild. It's a nice goldy colour ink. So I thought that's perfect for titles, especially in the 1.1 stub. So let's have a look at my future log. Well, to be honest, I don't really have too much to put in there at the moment. I do spend a lot of my time in my calendar. So I use my calendar on my Mac and my phone and my tablet really heavily. So the future log really, it's already in the calendar. But these pages in this 1911 were predefined, were preset. So that's why they're there. You know, so in here, I'm going to, I may want to jump ahead to say December. And I might want to put in here 25th Christmas. You know, it's down to you how you use this. As I say, it's only because it's been predefined that I've really set this up because my calendar is driving things. And part of what I want to do is still keep that calendar because I really like the way it integrates with my email and gives me notifications. So we've looked very quickly there at the future log. Now we're going to get into stuff that I'm actually going to be able to do things with. So here we go with the annual theme and goals. So what the idea of these two pages is I used to be very goal oriented. I used to set, you know, five for year, one year, six month, three month, really used to set goals. And one of the things that I was finding with that is the goals are really good, but they're very dependent on other people. So it's easy to miss them. And when you miss them, you really start feeling bad about yourself because you have missed a goal that you've set. So I listened to a number of podcasts and one of them is Cortex. And on there, they've been discussing the idea of having an annual theme. So rather than setting goals, you're setting this theme, which is where everything that you work is within. And then within that, you might have some short term goals or targets. I like the word target that you can aim for. But the idea is it should all be moving and within the structure of a theme. Now, if you haven't already, I do suggest checking out the Cortex podcast because it's got some really good in-depth discussions on this. So I had a good think over the Christmas period about what can my theme be? And what I came up with is my theme for 2021 is Phoenix. So this is the year of the Phoenix. And this is all about rebirth, about building on what I've got, adding on to it, but also trying new things. And one of these new things is this bullet journal. And part of the reason why I haven't been able to do this video until the end of January, well, I had to order the journal and wait for it to arrive. And it didn't get here until the middle of January. So I thought, well, that's fine. It's all part of rebirth. So let's start it and we'll start it so that everything kicks in as of the 1st of February. So yep, that's why I thought the year of the Phoenix. Now, what we're going to do is that we're going to look at the, my first two months and what the goals are that I want for those first two months. So I've got a lot of things going on. But the first thing is, obviously, is this YouTube channel. So using here the Fountain Pen Revolution Darjeeling. As I said, this has got Robert Oster Rubin for the ink. My targets are my goals for January. Well, the first one is, because I've got my YouTube channel, I'd like to get 200 subscribers. which doesn't sound a lot, but remember, I only started my channel back in October, so I'm really trying to build that. So yeah, I thought that's a really good challenge for January. The other thing I want to get in January is I'm working on an online course for Udemy about email. 
and I thought, well, I want to get my email class published. Well, that's that's on the way. Will I get it done by the end of January? I don't think I will. I've still got three more videos to record for it, but I've already done four. So I'm a good halfway through and I'm going to push to try and get it done by the end of the month. And that's the idea of setting up these goals or targets on a monthly basis. They're things that I think at the start of the month I should be able to achieve at a push. They're not meant to be easy targets. They're meant to be something that's at a push. And the only way you can do that is by deciding what you want, deciding on a way to measure it, writing it down and committing to it. So these are the two targets I've committed to for January. So because we're near the end of the month, it's time to set up my targets for February. So my two targets here... The first one, again, based on that YouTube video, I now want to say by the end of February, I'd like to have 350 subscribers. There we go. Do I think that's possible? Well, I'd like to think it is. Do I think it's going to be hard to achieve? Absolutely. Got to remember, February is only 28 days. It's the shortest month, and I'm trying to go almost double what I would have started the month with. So yeah, it's going to be a push, but hopefully by working hard on my videos, keeping them regular, hopefully keeping them nice and interesting, that I'll be able to get that growth. The second goal that I've got, well, I thought I'm going to finish the email course. So let's start thinking about my next course. And the next course I'm thinking about doing is on task management, because, you know, part of the email course is talking about having a task management system. So my, my thinking is, let's start describing that in a bit more detail. So by the end of February, I'm going to say for a task management course, I'm abbreviating. Remember, this journal is just for me, so I can use whatever abbreviations are sensible to me. So course, and all I'm going to say here is I'm going to have it outline and scripts. Now, by scripts, I don't mean I'm going to have everything I'm going to be saying. What it means is I'm going to outline the course. I'm going to break that up into a number of different videos. And then for each video, I'm going to be bullet pointing the key things that need to be covered and the order that I need to cover them so that when I come to do the video, I've got that there and then I can talk through it. It also allows me to make sure I've got all the resources I need. So, you know, do I need screenshots? Do I need to create a video capture of me actually using a task management system? That's what it's all about. So it's doing the pre-thinking so that obviously in March, that's when I hopefully I'll be able to do the filming and editing. So they're my annual themes and my goals for January and February. So we'll go over the page. I'll just put my blotter in first. Make sure that I don't end up with ink coming through. So next, I've got a master project list. So here, I'm going to only put a few examples here, but what I'm trying to do here is say, right, these are the projects that I'm going to be working on and I'm going to put on target dates when I'd like to see them completed by. So again, let's start looking at this. So I've got a number of projects going on. The first one is my pen videos. Well, that's going to be ongoing because, you know, I'm aiming to do two of those a week, ideally. Next project is my email course. Well, my target date for that is the end of January. So 31st of the 1st, 21. I've then got my task management course. Of which my target date is the 31st of the 3rd. 21 so the end of march other things that i have is i'm working on an ios and a mac app for managing my pen collection and my ink collection called pen list and i want to have version 2021 version 1 out by the 31st of the 3rd 21 this is primarily a bug fix you know tweaking up things that i'm not quite feeling that are right and that's just something i'm going to be working on i have another Mac app or iOS app called Shift Dashboard. And I want version 2021.1. With this one, though, I'm saying this will be the end of April that I want to have this out by. 
the Shift Dashboard app, it's a bit more of a niche app. Uh, it's aimed at allowing people to manage shifts for their team, but it also does things like it manages their projects, their clients. It allows them to do their billing and create invoices. So it's just a bit like a management system aimed at shift work. So uh, this is my master project list. Now, when I was setting this page up, I spent oh, a good couple of hours thinking about this page. I kept going backwards and forwards about what to include on it because, you know, you could put on there things like the status, what's the aim of the project. But I kept thinking about it and I kept thinking to myself, the whole idea of this is it's a project list. It's my master project list. Do I need too much detail on here? No, I don't. I need to know what the project is and I need to know what the target date is. And then if I want more detail, I can just go to the relevant pages. So I also thought to myself, well, should I be including my pages on here? And again, I thought to myself, well, no, because again, it's too much information. If I want to know what pages are related to pen videos, all I would have to do is go back to my index, look for my pen videos, and that would have the pages there anyway. So why should I duplicate that? So that's how I ended up with this. So we've got the project and just an idea of when I want it to be achieved by. So again, it's popping that blotting paper and we'll go over. So this is another page where for today, I won't be putting anything in it. This is a gratitude log. So this is again, something new that I'm going to be trying. One of the reasons for this is it's so easy to be negative about things it really is. I mean, we've all been there. It's so, so easy to just see what's gone wrong. And one of the things I want to try with this gratitude log is not necessarily every day, but maybe two or three times a week to sit down and think what's gone really well, who's helped me, what am I grateful for? And then use these two pages to document that. So the idea is that as I go on and document this, I can also then come back and reread these. So days when things are feeling really bad or when you're feeling down, you can come back to this gratitude log, have a look at it. So I think that's going to be something really interesting to try. As I say, I've never done one before, so this is going to be a nice experiment. And if I do future plan with me videos, this is one of the things where I'd actually like to talk about in the video. And is this something that you'd be interested in in me doing? Would you be interested in me discussing, you know, things that I've been grateful for in the month or things that have gone well? I'd love to see what your comments are. Please drop a comment below because I'd like to make these videos nice and collaborative where I'm giving you the information that you would like me to discuss. Okay, jumping over to the next page. Lessons learned. So again, obviously, this isn't a page I'm going to be able to start today. This will start after I begin. And again, it's very simple what it says. It's lessons learned. When you do project management, one of the things you usually do when a project's finished is you reflect back on it and try and come up with some lessons that you've learned so you don't repeat them. And also so you can share them with other people. So again, that's the idea of this page. So I can capture what lessons have I learned, what I did to get out of it, and then what I can do in the future to avoid it. And it's something, again, that I'll be reviewing at least once a week for what lessons learned should be going in there, and then monthly to read through it to make sure I don't fall into the same traps again. Okay, brain dump. So again, the idea of this page is we often are there going on through our day and something pops up in our mind and we think, oh, that's a brilliant idea. We try to keep it in our mind. What happens? We forget it. Oh, what you may do is what I used to do. You know, you grab a scrap of paper, you jot down the idea. Yeah, so I'm going to jot down a brilliant idea. I'm going to put that scrap of paper down somewhere. Forget where I put it that idea is gone. So the whole idea of here with this brain dump is as I have these brilliant ideas, I'll just write them in here. You know, it'll be a list of things. But then what I'll do is again, weekly, I'll be reviewing this and I'll be taking things from here and either putting them into my task management system or thinking, no, that's something which is nice, but I can do that at a later date, in which case it will go onto my someday, maybe later list. The aim is I can capture things as I think about them, have them in one place where I know where it is and have a scheduled routine to go and check on it to make sure that I'm actioning them. So again, this is one I'd like to discuss in future plan with me videos because I think it'd be quite interesting to go through this and maybe even spark some ideas in other people. Okay, video improvements. I'm actually going to be putting some entries in this so you'll actually get to see a bit more writing again. This page is obviously related to these videos that I do. Now, one of the things I try to do 
is make sure with each video I make, I'm doing at least one thing different than previously. And as I was saying with the brain dump, I've been writing these down on scraps of paper and then scraps of paper, well, they get vanished, you know. It's amazing, you turn around and the wife's tidied things away. So here, the aim is that instead of trying to put them on scraps of paper, instead of trying to keep them in my head, I'm going to write them down on here. And then every week when I'm planning my videos, I'll come in here and I'll be able to see if there's one thing that I can pick to apply to future videos. So what have I got to put in here? Well, I've got two. The first one is to add on-screen titles for pens, inks, paper, etc. The second one, pens and use video, PIU I call it, more detailed description. of the pen and ink. So the first one, essentially, is gonna be putting titles on to make it easy for people to see what I'm using. And the second one, pens in use, this is more aimed at the wrap-up video. I very quickly discuss each pen and I don't seem to give a lot of detail. And so it's hopefully to try and improve the amount of detail I give when I'm talking about the scores I'm giving and what is leading me to give it that score. Now I'm just gonna quickly go back a page because I say I'm using this large term paper and I've had mixed feedback about this. So I don't know if you can see here, you know, there is a little bit of show through. This gold ink, obviously that's coming through quite a lot, but that's because that's that stub nib and that's that quite thick gold ink. But the red ink, again, yes, it's coming through, but not enough to stop me from using both sides of the paper. So at the moment, I'm quite happy with this paper. All right, let me put my blotter in there. And now we're going to move on to my month view. So at the start of each month, I'll be doing one of these pages. So what I've got is the days of the month, the day that that date falls on, and then I'll be slotting into each of these any key appointments as they come up. So if we look at February, I'm only going to look at the first few days, but what I'm going to be saying here, on the first, I'm going to record a video. On the second, I'm going to be publishing the pens and use for February video. And on the fifth, I'll be publishing a video. The idea of this is to give me a very quick overview of what's going on in that month. Over here, you'll see this SREA. Well, I'm just gonna move the page a bit so you can see the bottom. What I've done is I said, right, these are things I want to track. I want to track the number of hours sleep I get, if I've read or not, if I've exercised or not, and if I've consumed alcohol on that day. So sleep, read, exercise, and alcohol. And what I'll be doing here is each day I'll be marking these off. So every day I should be putting a number, which will be the number of hours that I've slept. If I've read that day, I'll be putting an X in it. If I've exercised again, I'll put an X in it. And if I've consumed alcohol, I'll put an X in that as well. Why am I doing this? Because I want to get a better feel of what my sleep patterns are. I want to increase the amount that I'm reading. I want to be able to see what exercises I'm doing. And I also want to be able to track at the alcohol that I'm consuming. Now, you could do that in various apps. You can do it loads of different ways. But what I thought is, well, I've got this month view. This is something really nice and simple. It'll take me seconds each day to complete. And it's all in one place. So that's why that's on there. Then if we come over to the other page, you see this one's blank. What I'll be using this for is any tasks that I need to get done that month. Now, I do have a really solid task management system. So this will be, again, more along the lines of I'm going through my day, something comes up, and I think, yes, I need to get that done this month. It'll be going in here. If it's something that I think, um, I don't know, I've got to do my tax return in June, well, that's where I'll then switch back here to my future log and I'll put it in the appropriate month, just so I'm capturing it. And then when I create this, each month I look back at that future log and populate that from anything that is in there. 
I don't know how this is going to go. As I said, this is my first time using a bullet journal. So I'm going to be experimenting with this and I'll be seeing how I handle it. And this may change. Again, one of the beauties of the bullet journal, you adapt it to meet your needs. I'd be interested again, if you can drop into the comments, how do you handle this if you bullet journal? How do you handle things that may come up in the future? I'd love to get people's advice so that I can improve what I'm doing. Because if people don't tell me how to change and what to change, well, how do I know if I'm not doing something in the most optimal way? Okay, let's just pull one of these blotters out. I don't need loads of them, which is why I swap them from page to page. Next page. So here, this is where I'm going to plan out my week. So on a Sunday before each week starts, I start my weeks on a Monday, I'll be going through and I'll be populating this. Now I'm going to populate some bits in here now. So what I've done is I've divided each page. So I've got five going down and four across each page, which gives me the seven days of the week plus a title. And I was thinking to myself, how do I handle this? Do I put everything in one? But then I thought, well, no, let's break this up. This is again coming back to my goals, my theme for the year. And these are the areas where I want to be using that Phoenix thought. What can I be doing to improve my health? What can I be doing to improve my job? Next actions is my productivity coaching business. What can I do to improve that? What can I be working on in that? What appointments do I have? You know, that that's the one where I think hopefully will fill up quite well. Videos. So these are the videos I'm making. So again, this is where I can put down what I'll be doing each week and on what days. And then MISC, you know, we all have other things that come up which don't fall into one of the categories. And I like the idea of having these categories. And it's something I may advise you to look at as well, because then you can see how you're balancing across everything that you're doing. As we did on the previous page, you know, I can come in here, I can say on the first for videos, I'm going to record a video. On the second, I'm going to publish pens and use. And on the fifth, I'm going to pu publish another one. But then looking at this, I've missed a day. Wednesdays, well, I also record on a Wednesday, so I can now put that in because I'm planning my week. Uh, the Friday one, the publish there is actually for a pen that should hopefully arrive in the next week, which is a Moonman P135. And I'm going to be doing an unboxing and first impressions video. And that's when I'm aiming to publish it because I try to publish my videos on a Tuesday and a Friday. So I would spend the weekend going through and I'd populate this. I'm not going to populate with everything because some stuff, obviously, I don't want to share on the video. But this is just to give you an idea of what I'm going to be using it for. And then if I go over, well, we've got a blank page at the moment. I'm going to open another notebook in a second to show you what I'm going to be doing with that. Again, Talking about the paper, you can see we're getting that black line coming through. But for me, it's not enough to cause me an issue. So this next page, this will be the start of some daily logs. So I'm going to fetch in my current journal that I'm using, and I'm going to describe what I do there. The first thing I'm going to do is show you these two. I started experimenting this in this book here. Now this is a Claire Fontaine 90 GSM book, beautiful paper, certainly a lot thicker than this, but this is lined whereas the bullet journal has got that grid. And I've got to be honest, that dotted grid is so much easier to use for the bullet journal. I found trying to use lined paper, it just looks messy. You know, it looks horrible. So that's why I ordered the, this large term specifically because I wanted the dotted paper. This is also a whiter paper than the cream. It doesn't really bother me too much the color of the paper. It's what I'm using it for, but just so it's a comparison. So I'll quickly move that one out of the way. I'm going to fetch this one back in. So this is what I use for my daily journal. So each week I start with a brand new double spread. In my experimenting, I've tried continuing on. If I haven't used a double spread for a week, it looks a bit messy. And I thought, well, let's keep it one week at a time. And the idea with this is I'll start by putting the date. So today is Monday, the 25th of January. Yeah, really simple. <laughs> you know, you need to know what the date is. What I then do is I look through my task management system and from with a lot of task management systems, you'll have hundreds, if not thousands of tasks in there. Now, there's no way you can achieve all, all of them. You also may have a lot of projects going on and there's no way you can touch each project every day. 
But what you can do is look through and determine which tasks you want to achieve that day. And what I try to do is come up with two or three key tasks that I want to get done that day and I write them in here. So for today, strangely enough, I want to record the bullet journal video. Guess what? I'm doing that at the moment. And then I want to edit it. I use this dot here because that's part of the bullet journal system. A dot indicates a task. Then I'm going to put a little circle because I've got an appointment later on and it's for something called a startup huddle. And that starts at 5.30 p.m. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting down the key things I want to get done that day and any appointments that I've got scheduled in for today. By doing this first thing in the morning, I'm planning my day out. You know, I've done my prioritization so that I can just get on and do the work. Now, as I go through the day, I'll finish things off. So, you know, I'm going, I've recorded that. So I'll just put an X through that cross to say it's done. So I know what I've finished. At the end of the day, should I have any of these that I haven't done? Well, what I can then do is start up the next day. So I'm going to start up here Tuesday. We're pretending here that it's the end of the day. Tuesday, the 26th of January. Now, the first thing I'm going to actually make a note of here is public holiday. So in Australia, it's a public holiday. When you work for yourself, that makes not much of a difference. But because I haven't finished the editing, what I would then do is I would put in here, edit bullet journal. Now, if you're going by the actual key, you would put an arrow there. Now, to me, that's a bit confusing because does that mean it's gone to the next day or it's gone back to your main task list? So I just put an indicator on here saying that I've moved it to Tuesday, just so I know what I've done with it. And then I would then do exactly as I did on the Monday. So I would go through my task list. I would come up with any tasks that I want to get done today. You know, so the task I'd want to get done that day is publish video. And I'd also check my calendar to make sure I've captured any calendar events for the day. And I do this every morning. It's the first thing I do every day. By doing this, what you're doing is you're organizing and planning your days. Yes, things may come up. And if they do, you can't finish some of these tasks, but you've got a mechanism to move them around. You've got an instant view of what you need to get done that day. And that's what I use to drive myself. I'm into this list, uh, I want to say at least once an hour, if not multiple times an hour. And it could be, if I get all these done, I might go back to my task list and pick some more items. I'll just drag them on here. You know, and this is why I think having two pages for a week works really well. You know, you get usually three working days on here, two working days here, and then you get your weekend when you generally find you don't write as much because you're not doing as much. So let me fetch back in my bullet journal. So this is my bullet journal and the way that I use it. I deliberately use my fountain pens because I just love using them. I mean, I'm just going to fetch them all in here that we've talked about today. You know, so we've talked about the Twisby Eco with that fine nib and Van Diemen's Devil's Black Ink. We've talked about the fountain pen revolution, Darjeeling, with the Robert Oster Rubine Ink. That's got a medium nib. We've talked about the Twisby Eco with a 1.1 stub nib and the Robert Oster Grun Gilt ink and the Pilot Custom Heritage 92 with Pilot Irishizoku Momiji ink. And again, that's got a medium nib. And these are how I'm using them. Now, yes, I've used red here. Use whatever color you want. Again, this is the whole idea and the beauty of the bullet journal. And what I actually do is I use different ink per day. So when I come to Wednesdays, you know, Wednesday, I might have a blue ink. You know, this is in a pen BBS. The idea is do what works for you. Do what you enjoy. Write with tools that you enjoy writing with. Try and get a notebook and paper you're going to enjoy writing with. 
because if you're not going to enjoy it, you're not going to do it. If you're not doing it, well, what's the point? So please drop me any comments about this. I really would like to get your feedback around the bullet journal and the bullet journal system. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. I hope it's a little bit of a change from just looking at pens. I really do think that the pen is important, but it's what you're using it for which should really drive what pens, what papers, what other tools you're using. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Are you using bullet journaling? Have you used this paper or these pens and inks? Why not drop a comment down below? Let's kickstart the conversation and get a good look at this plan with me. I'm also thinking about doing this as a series. So the last week of each month, I will release a plan with me video for the following month. Is that something you'd be interested in? If it is, again, drop a comment down below. Are there things you'd like to see me include in the bullet journal? I mean, the beauty of the bullet journal, it's so flexible. Again, drop me a comment. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.